DUI charge is serious, with serious consequences. Even on a first DUI in Alabama, you can be sentenced to up to one year in jail. You can also be fined $600 to $2,100 and pay court costs anywhere from two to $300 up to $600. You can also have your license suspended for 90 days or revoked for a year depending on the circumstances. And you can also be required to install an ignition interlock device on your vehicle if you meet certain criteria. And you could be required to attend the court referral program as well. We understand how you feel. We've represented a thousand plus people on DUIs and have handled thousands of cases throughout the state of Alabama. We know that you're scared. We know that you're anxious. We know that it is very, very difficult to decide which attorney to hire to represent you. The one thing that you need to know is that you definitely need an attorney to help you through the web of pitfalls that are out there because DUI defense is very complicated if it's done correctly. It's just hard to know for you as a layperson exactly who to hire or if what someone on the phone with you or who is conversing with you is giving you the correct information. There's some criteria that I suggest that you go through and this, I believe, will help you in determining whether you're hiring somebody who is a DUI attorney rather than simply some attorney out there who will take your DUI if you hire them and pay them the nominal fee that they are going to charge. The first thing that I think that you should ask is whether the attorney is a member of the National College for DUI Defense. This is a very solid organization that has been around for many years and is focused on the education, training, and is information-based for attorneys to learn about and practice and network and connect with other attorneys who primarily handle drunk driving cases. It's very important if you are seeking out the best representation and if you are seeking out the best result on your DUI that the attorney that you hire is a member of the National College for DUI Defense. The second item that is a necessity in my opinion is that the attorney that you retain to help you with your DUI case in Alabama is certified per NHTSA, which is the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, to administer standardized field sobriety tests. These are the same tests that you were asked to perform on the side of the road. It's very important that the attorney that you hire is trained in these tests and is familiar with these tests because as I'll go over in just a minute, there are many, many issues and items that you can spot if you're trained in these tests and you're trained what to look for. You're going through the same training that the officers go through during their certification process. And it's not just about the tests, it's about the arrest process, it's about the phases of the arrest process, the vehicle in motion phase, the personal contact phase, the pre-arrest screening phase. You know, there are most attorneys out there that are not aware of, of those issues that, that they need to be looking at to determine whether there is a legitimate legal argument or uh, it will help them to uncover a factual argument in your case in order to get you the best result possible. You also need someone who is very experienced and well-versed in the driver's license aspect of your case. There are lots of folks out there that are unaware of the specifics about driver's license issues associated with DUI. You've got the administrative suspension on the front end and you have issues related to an enhanced suspension time or revocation and also the ignition interlock which is tied into that and also you have the suspended time on the back end if you're convicted. There is very, very, very specific and detailed and complicated aspects of the driver's license portion of a DUI 
and there are a lot of folks out there that are handling DUI cases that are unaware. And it's sad to see that because there is a better way to, to do it. And that's the reason that I believe those criteria will help you get to someone that can give you the best result possible and that can help you in navigating these pitfalls that are out there because there are many, many out there and they get worse and worse as the legislature continues to modify the DUI statute. There are people out there that get arrested for DUI and you refuse the test but you know that you were drunk, impaired, whatever it might be. And there are also people out there who submitted to the test and they're well over 0.08. They may be a 0 0.16, 0 0.20, 0 0.25. Those people out there need to know that pleading guilty is not their only option. They need to know that there are lawyers out there, such as myself, and there are other good DUI defense attorneys in the state of Alabama that know how to litigate these cases, know what to bring up, and know how to handle these in a way that is going to get you the best result possible. And it's very, very important that you hook up with and work with someone that understands the ins and outs of, of DUI defense because even though you may feel like your case is hopeless, there is a way to suppress some of this information, to suppress some of these tests, to keep information out of evidence or to negotiate and work something out so that charges may be dismissed or reduced for a non-DUI disposition because our goal in every single DUI case that we handle is to either have the DUI dismissed or to have it reduced and settle the case for a non-DUI disposition. If those two things are not possible, the next step for us is trial. And if the client decides that the client would like to proceed to trial, then we encourage that because if a client simply pleads guilty, the client is going to suffer the ramifications and the repercussions associated with a DUI conviction. So we always encourage our clients to, to proceed to trial on their cases because we know what the result is going to be if they simply plead guilty and we would like to avoid that uh, if we can and it's the client's decision ultimately but we always encourage clients and we encourage them to to look at all aspects of the information that we present when they're trying to make the decision about trying their case or accepting an offer that is on the table. So the first step in a DUI defense case is to secure the license issues. That it may include requesting a hearing, may include requesting a review, may include going to the driver's license suspension hearing. Uh, it may include filing a lawsuit against the Alabama Department of Public Safety. But no matter what stage you're in, whenever you choose to retain us, we evaluate it and go through a very sophisticated process and procedure that we have put together to handle these cases in order to give our clients um, the best chance of success on their cases. The next thing is for us to gather information from you and about you. We have a very extensive questionnaire that we will either go over with you or send to you uh, or you can pick it up from us and that gives us lots of information about you and helps us to humanize you with the prosecutor and the other parties that we will be uh, dealing with on your case. We'll also give you a plan of action. A lot of people get worried because they feel like they're not doing anything to help their case and we'll give you a plan of action and things that you can focus on and we'll counsel you not to worry about your case or worry about the outcome but let's focus on the process. Let's focus on what you can do today to help you as a person but also to help you with your case. And that's one of the things that we feel like separates us from other folks that are out there because we will give you a plan of action and go over with you the things that we feel like you should do uh, to help us help you. And it gives folks a lot of comfort uh, in doing those things and we, those things always help and they never hurt and we feel like it's important for you to, to take the action steps that, 
that we give you. The next step that we go through is we'll file documents with the court and we get to choose what documents those are. We'll file a notice of appearance, usually a motion to continue. And uh, we may also file other documents uh, at that time as well. Depending on where we are, we will then decide at what point in time we need to file discovery motions and we look at those based on a a court by court basis and also a case by case basis depending on what the issues are and depending on whether that may help our case at that point or uh, might hurt the case and of course we don't want to do anything that could uh, be detrimental to your case at that time. At that point we begin prepping for the initial appearance and that includes putting everything in a uh, in an order that is accessible and collecting documents and other items that you have completed and then we begin, of course, moving towards that first court date, whenever that might be, whether it's uh, on the initial court date or usually the case would be continued at some point. After that, we begin the evaluation process of your case. We look at every single aspect of DUI defense in order to give you the best result possible. We look at any defense that might be available that is out there. If there was an accident, most people think that an accident case, they think this, I had an accident, I was impaired, I'm guilty, I need to plead guilty. And that could not be further from the truth. Accident cases are very, very tough for the prosecution. And there are a lot of folks out there handling DUI cases that are unaware of that. They just don't know the ins and outs of the accident issues uh, in a DUI case. The other issues that we look at are actual physical control. Were you in actual physical control of the vehicle? Were you sitting in a parking lot? Where were the keys? Was the vehicle operable? Those are things that we need to look at in every single one of our cases that involve those issues. We also look at the private property DUI issues. We also look at anonymous tip issues. There's been some recent cases that have come out uh, that are not good for the defense on those case on those type issues. However, there are still arguments that can be made and there is still a burden that we feel like the prosecution must meet anytime there's an anonymous tip issue on a DUI case. We also look at issues about uh, whether you were asleep at the wheel, whether there were passengers, uh, whether uh, there are other issues associated with actual physical control, whether you're on private property, uh, what are the issues associated with how the officer got to you, where you are. We have a lot of cases where people pull over and they're sleeping in a mall parking lot at night. And we want to we want to know uh, all of the facts associated with those aspects so that we can uh, make sure that the arrest process was done properly uh, by the officer. We also look very carefully at whether there was a blood test performed. There are many folks out there who assume that a hospital blood test is reliable and is one that should be looked at closely uh, as one that is foolproof as far as introduction into evidence and that it comes in every time. And the answer to that is absolutely not. The hospital blood testing process for blood alcohol content is definitely not something that is uh, or should be relied upon because the testing is not uh, valid, it's not scientifically reliable, and should not be admitted into evidence in our opinion. Uh, we also look at the process that a state trooper may have had blood drawn at the hospital provided to him and he uses the blood kit and sends it to Alabama Department of Forensic Sciences in order to have the uh, blood tested there. Those tests are much more accurate, we feel like, but there are still many processes and procedures, such as chain of evidence and other items that must be followed very closely in order for that to uh, come into evidence and be reliable. We also look at any issues that are associated with your case related to the Drager breath test and any issues that come up there, uh, whether it's the 20 minute deprivation period, whether uh, you may have had mouth alcohol, whether you uh, burped or belched uh, during the 20 minutes prior to the test. There are implied consent issues where you provided proper implied consent warnings associated with 
the suspension of your license if you choose to refuse the test. And all those are issues collectively that we look at when determining whether a breath test that you submitted to and that ultimately provided a result that was printed on a certificate of breath alcohol analysis and whether that should come into evidence under the um, rules of evidence or under the statutory guidelines that must be strictly complied with under Alabama case law in order to just come into evidence without them having to go through the normal process for scientific evidence to get that uh, into the evidence of the case, whether in front of a judge or in front of a, a jury. We also look at whether the stop of your vehicle or the initial encounter with you was done in a way that is legal and that is constitutional. It's very important to look at that because if there was no reasonable suspicion of violation of the law, then the officer should not have pulled you over. And if we can prove that, then we can likely have all evidence that may be admitted or that was collected against you suppressed. And if that's the case, then we would win the case based on uh, the state or the city not being able to prove their case. We also look at all of the medical defenses available, whether you have GERD, whether you have dentures and there was alcohol that was collected uh, within the dentures, whether you had recent uh, dental work done. There, there are a lot of medical issues, uh, whether you have diabetes, there are many, many medical issues that come up and we always go through that and make sure that those defenses don't apply. And if they do apply, then we work those up and make sure that we have gone through them properly with you and presented those defenses on your behalf. We also look at the UTTC, with the, which is the traffic ticket, uh, the complaint against you to make sure that there are no issues uh, related to that as well, such as municipal ordinance issues, uh, if there are issues related to the code sections cited, whether it's proper and whether you have, whether they have your proper information uh, on the UTTC or not. We also go through and determine whether you requested an independent test and if that was handled properly. Uh, we look at any roadblock issues that may come up. If a roadblock uh, was the cause of the initial encounter. And we also look at whether you have any prior DUI offenses and whether we can exclude those and whether the city or the state uh, has the necessary evidence related to those priors to be able to use those through the negotiation process or through the trial and sentencing process if it gets to that point. The next thing that we look at and a very, very important aspect of the case is the standardized field sobriety test. And I am certified as an instructor in field sobriety testing and also as uh, the administrator of the test. And going through that process and reviewing hopefully a videotape, definitely the trooper or the city officer's uh, notes related to the field sobriety testing, the process that they have to go through in order to come to a decision to arrest you for DUI is one that has to be followed closely because otherwise they are simply going through the motions and not doing it properly and arresting you not based on sound evidence or based on logical conclusions from their observations but just running through the motion so that they can get to an arrest at the end. We want to make sure that that is not happening and that things are not being done that are in violation of your rights and in a way that is not standardized. We want to make sure they gave you the proper instructions, make sure that they look for the pop proper clues, make sure that they score the uh, test correctly. It's very important that those items are looked at closely because otherwise um, you're giving up some of the aspects of your case that could be litigated and ultimately tried uh, if needed. The other options that we look at after we've gone through the full analysis and talked to the client about every aspect related to their DUIs, we determine if there are any triable issues in the case and how likely it is that we would succeed on those issues and then we go through the process with the client so that the client gets to decide with our guidance 
how to proceed in the case, whether to settle the case for a non-DUI disposition, if that is an option, or whether to uh, proceed to trial, if that is what the client chooses, or to accept whatever offer is out there. Uh, and that is usually against our advice, depending on what the tribal issues are that come up. And in any DUI case, if you have the knowledge and the experience to go through and review every aspect of the case and every defense that might be available, there are always issues that can be brought up related to a DUI case because they are so complicated and they require so many steps in going through the process. So it's very important that the case is looked at with eyes that have the experience and the knowledge to get you the best result possible. It's very important. We've handled a thousand plus DUI cases. We've resolved 5,000 or more charges throughout the state of Alabama, and we can help you with your case. All you have to do is let us know and call our office, and we will be glad to talk to you and discuss your case with you at no charge because we believe that you have a right to speak to any lawyer that you choose without having to pay an initial consultation fee in order to do so.